Okay. So hi everyone, welcome. We are excited to be here. We are two international student ambassadors from Chile and Colombia, both amazing countries. And uh, we'll be covering this session uh, an introduction, country overview, how we travel to Nova Scotia, how is our family, how is a day in our lives back in our countries, uh, transportation we used to use, uh, fun activities, our favorite spots in our local country, um, our favorite food, tips when you uh, decide to travel to our countries, and questions and answers at the end. So let me introduce myself. My name is Patricia Vargas. I am a first year student of Industrial Engineering Technology at Ibani campus. And I am Nora from Chile. Um, I'm a study office administration in Ibani campus too. All right, both Ibani. Um, country overview. I chose this picture just to show you that Colombia is the, the only uh, country in South America that has coastlines with both Pacific Ocean and Caribbean Sea. We have a population of 51 million people. We have a democratic government. We speak Spanish. Uh, our currency is Colombian peso, religion, Christianity, Catholic, and we also write in Spanish. And in our case, uh, our population is almost 18 million. We are a democratic republic too. We speak Spanish too. Um, our currency is Chilean peso, and most of our are Catholic. And uh, we are writing in Spanish too. Let's go to the next one. So how I traveled to Nova Scotia. Um, our capital city is Bogota, but I lived in Bucaramanga, which is a city in the northeast of the country. So I had first to travel to from Bucaramanga to Bogota, around one hour flight. Then there is no direct flight to Bogota from Bogota to Toronto, to Halifax, sorry. So I had to travel Bogota to Toronto around five hours, 50, 50, 55 minutes. And then from Toronto to Halifax, um, because I was traveling with kids, I just tried to choose the, the shortest itinerary possible. So I, I reached and uh, I arrived to Halifax around in 10 hours, roughly without this, the, without counting the waiting time. So in one day we, we could arrive to Halifax. Wow. Well, in, in our case, um, I, I received a notification from the government of Canada around August 6th. So I have only uh, two hours, two weeks, sorry, to prepare our trip. And we were traveling with a cat. So that's why uh, we had to, we had a lot of difficulty finding a, a, a ticket to fly to Canada. And we had to make a lot of stop. <laughs> So that's why our journey started in Santiago, the capital of my country where I was living, to Bogota in Colombia. <laughs> it took six hours. Uh, then we traveled from Bogota to San Jose. San Jose is in Costa Rica, in the middle of the Caribbean. Uh, we stayed there like 12 hours, literally camping in, <laughs> in Costa Rica. Uh, the next day we traveled to San Jose, from San Jose to El Salvador. It's a short distance. Uh, and then from El Salvador to uh, Toronto. And finally, we reached Canada. That's what we thought. <laughs> but it was that last day uh, for, um, for the students, uh, considering the quarantine period. So the airport was so crowded. The queue for immigration was so long that we missed our flight that day. So we changed the, the, the last trip from Toronto to Halifax for the next day. So we were traveling like three days. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> very long trip, yeah. Let's talk about our family. Okay, <laughs> um, my family is a small family. I First picture is my husband and I have two beautiful boys, seven and 12 years old. My, um, the, the pictures to the right are my parents and I just have one uncle and just have one brother. So the picture uh, below my parents is my uncle. And the first picture in the last row is my brother with his family, his wife and my niece. And the last picture is my grand are my grandmas. <laughs> That's such a lovely family, Patricia. Well, my family, in the first picture, I have my mother and my parents. Uh, fortunately, they are with us to, uh, still. And I have two brothers. 
And in the first picture, my oldest brother is with uh, his uh, wife and two children. And the next picture are my brothers. My brothers are look very different physically uh, of me. Three of them are very different, very different personality. They are super tall and I am very <laughs> short. Uh, but I'm crazy about my brothers. They are my best friends. Uh, we have a, a WhatsApp group. So in a daily basis, I send, well, I, I'm in charge to send the uh, voice messages <laughs> and send information every day. And we are connected every day. So I really love them. I miss, miss them terrible. And the other picture is my other significant other, uh, Ariel. And he shall, is my partner in crime. He shares the life with me. And he shared this crazy dream to travel to Canada. And here we are with our pet. His name is Karaoke because we really like with my, my husband Karaoke and we met in a karaoke also. So that's why the cat name is Karaoke. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful cat. <laughs> okay, how is the day in my life? I like to do exercise outdoors, so I try to do um, cycling at the first hour to, from 7 to 8. I start working at 8.30. I work remotely even before the pandemic, so I was just used to that. I had my office in my home. And during the pandemic, I had a little assistance behind, <laughs> always <laughs> joining me. <laughs> and I work till 6. Um, 6 p.m. and after that well our favorite plan is to go with the kids eat some ice cream and prepare dinner together we love homemade pizza and after dinner sometimes we read a story with the kids and uh, or play games board games or whatever has, has a family time that's how we call it and at night our favorite plan is to watch movies we love to marathon and to the last movie that we watched together was the complete saga of Harry Potter and the kids loved them. <laughs> Someone is sending a gift in the, in the window. <laughs> Ashley. Okay. Uh, well, in my case, um, I used to work in a Japanese company. Uh, it, it was a chipping line. Uh, so it was very dynamic job. So I start early in the morning from Monday to Friday and sometime weekends too. And I used to go to this facility with 9,000 vehicles. You can miss between all the vehicles we have. And in this company, it's basically a male company. So we were only three women that the women are in the, in the picture and they become my friend. Uh, their name are Patri um, Paulina. So it's Paulina one and Paulina two. Both of them are Paulina. And the following picture is a party we had with the in the facility. And other days in, during the week, I used to go to the port. Uh, the port is two hours from Santiago, my city. So I had to travel to the port. And in Chile, we have one of the longest working shifts, so we finish late. So that's why we have dinner late and we arrive home late. So basically, during working day, we don't have so much time for theater or other kind of activities. So I just arrive home, prepare dinner, stay with Ariel, my cat, and watch something Netflix or something from uh, Star Wars Universe, which I'm super fans of that. <laughs> I mean, too, I love Star Wars. <laughs> okay, and, and transportation. Well, my city is a, is a small city. It's not that much uh, crowded. So I love to use the bicycle as much as I, I can and short distances. Um, I had we, we had a car for long distances or emergency or just going to the market with the kids. And uh, we also had public transportation service as a bus system called Metrolinia and the uh, yellow caps for the taxis and um, you also can find uber and other similar transportation apps there well in my case in santiago uh, because it's a big city we have all kinds of transportation we have buses it looks like the first picture we have a subway which connect all the cities so the subway is very good i have uh, many lines uh, connecting the, the place we also have taxis and the taxis look like the picture are black with the yellow um, roof 
and we have Uber or other kind of transport like that. And in the end, the last picture is how it looks our city at a rush hour. So it could be difficult sometimes driving at a rush time. Oh, next one, it's about traffic. Yeah, a funny activities. OK, fun activities. Well, I as I told you, I love to do activities outside. So sometimes I meet my friends to play basketball or to play volleyball. I love all kinds of exercises. So basketball, volleyball, hiking, um, cycling, whatever. I love that. Um, I used to play clarinet. I don't have my clarinet here, so and with the kids and everything, it's very difficult to do it. But I, that's uh, something I love to do when in my free time, when I had some space. I love to travel with my husband and my family. And the last two pictures is just to represent like me. I love to dance, to party. I love to go with my friends. Um, anything outside i'm into that <laughs> and uh, the last picture is I, I love to travel to meet new places beautiful beaches and lakes and swim and adventures those are my fan activities what about you nora <laughs> yeah and we have to say that well, we are a neighbors country and colombian are well known because they are very good dancer especially salsa <laughs> latino dance <laughs> uh, we love to dance <laughs> Yeah. Well, in my case, um, when the first picture is with my friend, my co-worker Gabriel, outside of the city doing some activities outdoor, but most of the time I'm more bohemian person, I can say, <laughs> so I practice indoor activities. Um, the second picture is my co-workers with our boss, Japanese boss, uh, so we, we used to attend a lot of uh, parties in restaurant or just for fun with no reason going to a restaurant and have fun or going to a karaoke. And um, the following picture is my female group. It's a group of Japanese and Chilean and a Venezuelan friend. And we used to go every month for Korean food in Santiago that is a Korean neighborhood. So we really enjoy doing this activity, uh, female only, <laughs> I can say. And at the end, the all two pictures below uh, on the bottom, uh, it's uh, my home. Uh, I'm a very homey person too, so I, I really enjoy having uh, this dinner at my home with my partner, with my friends, preparing food, our typical drinks, and just having a nice conversation about our life. That's great. Yeah. All right, favorite spots to visit. Um, I just wanted to show all the spots I love from Colombia and all of them are different, um, different climates, different weathers and uh, different landscapes. So the first two are uh, two beaches. The first one is the Tairona Park. It's a natural park and it's a complete complex of six or seven beaches uh, surrounded by a palm tree forest and the, it has secret trails that you can go either walking or by horse and it's a complete experience that you when you get into the park you can feel like you are kind of um, I don't know in an adventure like going through a forest and then you reach the beach and you're relaxing that's that's great and if you are good walking when you can walk or you can either like rent a horse and go with all of that because of you can also and the recommendation would be to um, spent a night at least there, or two or three, so you can explore the complete park and go through all the beaches. And uh, you can take your own tent, or you can rent one there, or you can go through a more luxury plan or relaxing, uh, buying a night in a cabin or something like that. There is also a nude beach, very famous there, that people lo love to do. and. Um, it is next to the Caribbean Sea. It's it's amazing and it's has like all the environments there. You have beaches, you have forest, and <laughs> you have crazy weather as well there in the Sierra Nevada. This is in the Santa Marta city. And the other one to the right is Cartagena. It's also a um, very famous city because it's a historical city. It's surrounded by a um, teak wall that was built for protection. 
it's next to the Caribbean Sea, so you can find also beautiful beaches. But the most amazing thing there is the museums are the historical places, like the, the houses built in this colonial style. And uh, well, in the middle, in the road of the middle, uh, the first picture is a huge rock, which is called Piedra del Peñol. It is located in a town called Guatapé, close to Medellín, which is a, a famous city or an important city in Colombia. And what, do, what is amazing there is that it's a huge rock that the only point is just to go to the top and look all the, um, like the, the landscape. There is a lake besides that, like it, there's a lake in, um, next to the town and you can see the complete town, the lake. It's an amazing view on the top. But to reach that, you have to climb uh, around 650 steps. So that's like, a, like, a, like, I don't know, the beauty of scale all these the steps and uh, just you have the, your reward which is looking the the whole town in in all directions the next picture to the right in the middle row is a zoo that we love to visit with the kids it's called ukumani and uh, you can find elephants giraffe and all kinds of animals that it's very difficult to find like or you never expect to find in, in in colombia or south america and the kids love it because you have close contact with those animals you can also in some cases they give you a special food to feed them um, it's it's a, it's a beautiful experience as well and the last two pictures in the last row are high altitude landscapes so are more cold places and it's beautiful to go hiking there to see the sources of of, of water it is our main supply the first the first picture is the paramo of santurban that's the name so it's it's uh it's our main supply from my home city it's, it's uh, two hours from my from my city bucaramanga and the next picture is just we were starting climbing the uh, one of the glacial peaks that um, you can find in Colombia, which is for, if I'm not mistaken, it's 4,800 meters above the level sea. And it's a beautiful experience because you, you are like, you need to wear all the equipment and everything to climb mountain. So it's, it's, it's amazing. You can find all kinds of experience in Colombia, which is, which is beautiful. What wow. about you? you? I see a lot of pictures beautiful in yours. <laughs> yeah, but I, I only pick out two places. My favorite place is in Chile. You know, Chile is a very largest and narrow country. So we have different weather. In the north, it's warm. In the central area, it's Mediterranean. And in the south, it's very cold. Like in some part, very cold like Canada. Uh, but we are a dry country, uh, which is something very different in the region because in South America, all our neighbors, Peru, Argentina, Brazil, all of them have a lot of humidity. But Chile, no, <laughs> it's the opposite, it's super dry. And the first place I, I choose is San Pedro Atacama, it's in the north. So the, the, those pictures below to that place. And the city is um, in the altitude is uh, to more than 2,000 uh, uh, meters. And from that point, from that city, you travel to the mountain to find these wonderful places, the, um, the geysers. I think there are only a few places in the world that you can find those uh, amazing uh, geysers. So you, there are more than 80 there. So you have to wake up around 4 a.m. in the morning to go to the mountain and watch them. And we visit, we visit the, the place with my husband two or three years ago. Um, I was planning that trip for a long time. It was three or four, right, because the pandemic has some gap in my mind, sorry. And uh, when you travel there, they have this uh, hot spring, so you are in 4,400 meters from altitude, so the oxygen, it's different so you are like tired in the beginning so your body had to get used to the the level of oxygen and uh, well it's amazing so it was my first time uh, staying in minus 17 before coming to Canada I never experienced that weather in my country so it was amazing but just one day here we have <laughs> the, the whole season for enjoy that <laughs> um, also there are salars there lakes 
um, everything is full of salt. So you go to this lake and your body, uh, you, when you are swimming, it, you feel very, very weird feeling and it's very cold and the nature is amazing there. And, and the second uh, place is in the south of Chile, that is in the Patagonia. And some parts in the Patagonia are like Canada. I mean, cold and they have snow, they have black ice, uh, freezing rain and all that I have experienced here. <laughs> and I visit twice in my life that place. And in the picture, uh, I am with my Japanese friend Akane and my Chilean friend Maciel. Actually, she's living here in Nova Scotia and I follow her to, to here. And a few years ago, we went to the Patagonia, uh, to Torres del Paine. And we watched that amazing place. For me, it's the most beautiful place I, my eyes ha even, uh, haven't seen. I almost cried when I saw that. Uh, and it's really amazing. You can find a lot of nature, um, beautiful landscape. So that's Chile. Oh my God, amazing. I want to go there. <laughs> yeah, you have amazing picture too. The first one in your picture is the Caribbean or the Pacific Ocean? It's Caribbean. Caribbean. It's Caribbean. Caribbean. All right. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> So let's talk about food. Okay, food. So I am I am a corn lover. I love everything made of corn. And in Colombia, we made a lot of things based of corn. So the first one is um, it's a common can be either breakfast or dinner. It's a broth with um, eggs, milk, and potatoes. Some cases. It depends of how uh, or or where in, in you are located in Colombia because different regions do different things, and and it's always uh, with arepa. Arepa is like a it, it's it's some it's like a pastry made of corn, and can be stopped stuffed with cheese, which is the second picture. Can be it's made of corn, but it can be stuffed with cheese, or it can be and it, this is like. Um, this is like grilled, but can be also fried and stuffed with egg. This is very typical in the coast, in the Caribbean coast, uh, mostly. And both are uh, delicious. Everything made of corn is amazing. And in the second row, the first one, it's called empanadas. I think we all in South America have empanadas. And these empanadas are made of corn or wheat, or it can be either um, yuca or all kinds of things, and it is stuff as well of all kinds of things. Can be cheese, can be rice with meat, with grounded meat, with uh, eggs, with with everything you can imagine, and can be also grilled, can be also um, baked in the oven, or it can be um, fried. In this case, I'm showing you just the, my favorite ones, which are the empanadas made in the, in the Pacific area, which are made of corn and are fried, and they are stuffed with meat and potato. And it also joined with the hot sauce is, is delicious, but it's in the middle. And the, the, the next picture to the right is, is something wrapped with corn again. <laughs> it's also made of corn and it's stuffed with, it can be sweet or, or can be salty. But in my case, my favorite ones are stuffed with, with chicken. And it is, it's called a jacket. I think there is also similar, um, this similar food in, in Venezuela, for, for example, are, they are sweet or different presentations, but OK, my, my favorite ones are these made of corn and, and with chicken. And and this is a steam. This is made in, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's steam with water vapor. And the last one in the middle row is called tamal. It's very typical and also you can find it in several forms. My family are from the interior of the country, so um, this is the shape or the, the tamal that we ate. A, this is a complete meal wrapped in with uh, plantain leaves. So, but you can find inside a complete meal. It's like I think they make this just to have, for instance, uh, when you weren't to work in the past, you, they they take just the tamal and eat the whole complete um, lunch. So you have rice, um, all kinds of meats inside, usually at the same time, because in Colombia they, they, we eat a lot. So it's rice, meat, pork, chicken, uh, egg, potato, carrots, everything inside and everything grabbed like in the plantain leaves. 
uh, and the last two are big um, barbecue with potato, with um, something that is stuffed as well with with meat, with of course of course corn, arepa, mini arepas, but it's a typical food that we have like this barbecue, either in the oven or in the in the grill, and the last. Dish is like a famous, famous dish that we love, and it's very big. It's red beans. It's called bandeja paisa, and it's made of red beans, avocado, grounded meat, uh, sausages, um, eggs, and uh, pork rinds, rinds, and arepa again with corn <laughs> <laughs> and rice. So it's like everything in one dish, and you eat this and get like <laughs> you cannot eat in the rest of the day, I guess. <laughs> Yes, it's a lot of food, but it's delicious. Yeah, yeah, it's cute. When I visit Bogota, I eat uh, bandeja paisa, and I couldn't uh, finish. It's, it's yeah, cute. it's very very big. <laughs> My favorite in Colombia is arepa too. In Chile, we are certain having more arepas because the community of Colombian and Venezuelan is increasing. So we are um, importing your food. <laughs> Yeah. The more but in, in case of Chile, we have empanada too. <laughs> so the first picture is empanada. The first one is the, the traditional one, which is with beef, uh, onion, eggs inside, and it's prepared in a, in a oven. The second picture also is an empanada, but it's fried. So there are empanada for everyone in Chile. You can imagine the the quantity we have. We can we have with seafood, we have with cheese, we have mushroom with uh, cheese, we have shrimp with cheese. So em, empanada is like a you can eat it for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, or when you visit a place or you are working in a place. Oh, empanadas! So you know it's it's a lifesaver. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the the second line in the picture, uh, I put our version of hot dog. We call it a uh, completo italiano, which literally it doesn't make any sense in English because it's like a Italian completed. But it's how we call the hot dog, and it's the the bread with the sausage. Then there is a layer of tomato, a layer of avocado, and then mayonnaise, ketchup, or whatever. And also it's a it's a lifesaver. Uh, you can eat when you meet friends. You can eat in everywhere in the city. Also in breakfast, dinner, uh, at any time you can find a place with hot this hot dog. And some people, especially from the United States, when they see this, they they don't understand what we are eating. But this is our local version of hot dog. And the last two pictures are barbecue. Uh, children are, are well know about. A barbecue and mixing with wine because we produce wine and uh, we are more more than the elaboration our food is not very elaborated i mean not like in other country but we are very spontaneous so you can meet a friend today and say hey what are you doing tomorrow let's do a barbecue okay your place or my place okay let's do it and we just do the the barbecue and, and, and we have a good weather generally so we can do it in, in the jar with charcoal. It's not electrical, it's with charcoal. So we do in the jar and we stay the, the evening or the night or sometimes the whole night <laughs> doing the barbecue. <laughs> so that's it. So let's move to uh, tips when traveling. All right. So if you are um, thinking of traveling to Colombia, people are friendly and happy. Well, this Colombia and Chile and all of South America countries are are very similar in this part. People are friendly, happy. They love to drink. They love to party. They love to do dance, and they will invite you to join them at any celebration we have. And we want to celebrate everything that happens. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's in the week or if it's in the weekend. I mean, we, we love to get together and we love to party. Uh, what about you, Nora? Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, Chile is the same. I mean, in South America, all of us, we are friendly people. So when we receive someone from outside, 
Uh, we are those kind of cultures that we, we want to know about you. We want to ask you where you're from, uh, why you are here. So I have some, I met uh, friends uh, from outside living in Chile and after maybe five meetings, they realized that in everywhere they ask the same. So you have to be patient with us because we, we do it because we are interested in you. So it's our uh, welcoming way to say hello, to receive outsiders. And we also are that, those kind of uh, culture we kiss and hug and <laughs> of course we don't do when, uh, when we are in other uh, places but we share that aspect of being friendly warm and we like to dance and sing and share with people yeah okay and uh, Colombia is incredible diverse uh, in the natural resources, it is known with the full of natural resources and uh, also in the people. Colombia has uh, many regions that each region has its own accent and vocabulary, which characterizes its citizens. It's also within the with the Colombia. It's it's kind of weird when or different, let's say, when someone from one region moves to another, because we detect these these differences. Um, in the food, in the way they speak, but of course we all speak Spanish, but it's just like a few words or vocabulary that it's different and also the personality styles and is driven also because of the weather. We have different thermal floors, so that's the base of our diversity in natural resources, in landscapes, in vocabulary and uh, so on. Yeah. Well, in case of Chile, also the weather is uh, that are totally different from north to south. Uh, so it really depends where where you are in Chile. Uh, the north is warm, the south is cold. And when I was living in the central coast, uh, is very Mediterranean, and and you can see easily the different season. So you can see autumn, spring, uh, how dry and hot is the summer, and Cold, the winter is cold and, and dry, which is different uh, in with Canada too. And about the language, we uh, we have different accents, but there are not so many different like in other countries. But as a country, we have a different Spanish. So Chilean are well known because they speak fast and different and use many slang. And sometimes when two Chilean meet and start to talk in slang, other Spanish uh, speaker, they don't understand everything because we have a lot of different words and we use a lot of animals to describe situation, which is very funny and difficult to explain. <laughs> so we compare a lot of those kind of, uh, we see in the environment, in the language. Uh, we. Uh, recently, we are using a lot of um, English word, so we mix the all the languages. So we say we speak Spanglish. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes it's very confusing because we say party in a certain way is in Spanish. So it's it's very funny, <laughs> actually. But the thing is that not many uh, Chileans speak English, so that is funny that we when we mix the languages. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's also true in Colombia. A few people in Colombia speak English, so you you might find people speaking English like in tourist places or hotels or restaurants uh, at, uh, that usually receive tourists. Uh, but in the street, like you um, you take a taxi or you're going in the bus or you're going through the like walking around, you will not find like very easily in someone that speaks English. Uh, many few people really and uh, we need to have cash we use credit cards and we use um, these banks and applications but you need to still have cash for parking and informal market areas that they are not adapted to to receive the credit cards yeah it, in Chile it's the same it's the same and we have a lot of informal uh, markets uh, I think in Canada there is not that in anywhere. So we have some fairs of people uh, selling things on the street so that people only receive cash. And also for parkings, for example, some parking are paid, but others are not paid. And But you can find someone that need to work that is taking care of your car or maybe sometimes offer to clean your car. And so you always have some coins or cash to, to give them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and regarding the tips, they are 
optional only in restaurants and hotels. We don't have like the culture of giving tips in other any other businesses or services, just restaurants and hotels. What yeah. about you, Nora? Same in Chile, it's volunteer. Uh, it's optional if you want to, but usually we give tips in restaurant uh, clubs and we usually give 10%. If you want to give more, it's okay. It's very welcome, but usually we give uh, 10%. Okay, and the prices on the shelf includes the taxes, and also in Colombia the meals, as I show you in the in the my favorite foods, the meals are big. So there is something that is that is like a impressive for most foreign people that the dishes are very very big and they used to like full before finishing the meal. And uh, I just want to say, don't forget also to grab a cup of coffee and uh, I enjoy all these amazing landscapes in Colombia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing coffee. And I don't know how Shakira have that body because uh, you have a huge dish, bandeja paisa <laughs> is <a> huge. <laughs> Yeah, well, in our case, uh, I don't think they're so huge, but not small, neither. But what we have is the dinner are very late because we finish work late, so we go to bed late. And of course, the restaurants were up to very late, comparing with other countries, even in South America. And we consume a lot of bread. Uh, so we have bread in the morning, in the lunch and dinner. So don't be surprised if you go to a, a restaurant in Chile and you find bread in everywhere. So that's it. Okay. Thank you so much for listening. Yeah, so now um, we have some time for questions if you have. So I was reading the, uh, let me check, the window and I saw, I saw Colombian connected. Uh, Juan is Colombian, I think. And uh, he said that he's making his own arepas. <laughs> Maybe you can teach me. I love arepas, but I don't know how to prepare. And Tamal, I have tried the Venezuelan version only so far. Uh, Odgon said that the very efficient meal, I think it's it's about, you talk about your food in Colombia. I think that comment. Uh, yeah, you put that we are empanada lovers. Yeah, we have empanada in everywhere. <laughs> Ashley said, amazing presentation. Great work over you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> Yeah, we're just trying to share a piece of our culture, a piece of our language with you, and I really hope you enjoy it. Laria said, if portion of restaurants are so big in Colombia, it is strange to bring home baguette leftover. <laughs> is this considered normal or rude? It is normal. It is. It, I think I am. I can say some of the moms or grandmas used to carry a bag in the back just to keep all these leftovers and also for the if you have dogs and you want to give the bones and everything then you can also take that and <laughs> and take it home yeah it's it's, it's completely and say it's for the dog normal. and it's for your husband <laughs> yes yes <laughs> uh, patricia uh, who is the most famous uh, colombian um I think it depends, right? In the singer, I guess is Shakira. Shakira, right? <laughs> and the sports, well, our our popular sport is soccer, so you can recognize if you are a sport a uh, soccer lover, you can recognize James or Falcao. James, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Odgan really. says she's a a Shakira lover. <laughs> <laughs> she's I amazing. Think our, our Chilean, most famous Chilean nowadays is. Uh, Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal is the Mandalorian. <laughs> and he was on Game wow. of Thrones. Uh, he was in Narcos in Netflix. And now he is the Mandalorian. <laughs> so I didn't know that. Chilean, famous Chilean. <laughs> wow, wow, that's great. Adrian said, a great presentation. You made me excited to travel again. Oh, ah, and someone Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> Pedro Pascal picture. Sofia Vergara said, Juan, the actress of Modern Family. Right, she's well known yeah. because the accent. So probably we sounds like, like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah. <laughs> Chris says, the Mandalorian was so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then we have a gift of Sofia Vergara. I love Sofia Vergara too, said Sofia Vergara is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope you 
you know, more Chilean and Colombian people. <laughs> okay, any question, guys? Tell us everything you want to know about our countries. Uh, someone is typing. Just wait a second. One is typing. One is typing. <laughs> Juan is from Bogota, I, or from, I love your presentation. Ah, thank you so oh, much. Thank you, Juan. Ah, here we have a uh, question. What are the things that you miss the most? Definitely the family. <laughs> well, the food and the family, but yeah. I, can, I don't miss anything else, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, we haven't been here so many months yet. I mean, I haven't completed a year here in Canada. So people say that when you complete a year and a half, you start to miss deeply something of your culture. So I can say I'm still enjoying Canada. I don't miss any particular way. My brother, of course, but I have in contact with, thanks to technology, I'm in contact every day. But for me, everything in Canada, this is an amazing country. And everything is new for me uh, after five or yeah, five months here. Everything is new, how you buy grocery, how you, you communicate, how you, I don't know, how you drive, for example. <laughs> so everything is still, is still new. So ask me that in one year and a half, please. <laughs> and other question, is there more than one official language? Uh, no. Just the Spanish is official. Yeah, in in Chile also it's, it's Spanish the official, but in some location we have indigenous language, but our government is not spreading that language, so just few people in a small community they are able to speak those languages. I hope that change in the future, of course. Uh, I was going to say, how you find a place to dance in Nova Scotia, a Latin dance place? Have you? <laughs> No, I haven't had the chance, honestly, but I would love to find a place to dance. <laughs> I haven't too. I'm a no good dancer, but when I arrived, I went to, a, a, I think the, the name of the club in downtown is Atlantic or something like that. I went to that place and they started to put a Latino dance and I was dancing with a friend and everybody was like, oh, what are they doing? <laughs> So it was very funny, <laughs> but uh, I haven't found a place. It maybe in summer, maybe. Yeah, I would love to do. Right? It. Yeah, I can't wait for summer then. <laughs> yeah. So we said, did you get all the required ingredients for food when you want to cook something from your country? Oh, that's difficult. Uh, well, I I found the ingredient for the arepa, the corn flavor. I I found it, so I can make as one said, like we can make uh, homemade arepas. But there's something I haven't found and I love to eat. It's the uh, pineapple sauce. You can find pineapple, but you cannot find like the pineapple sauce that I bought in Colombia. And I love to use that in uh, all the preparations. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. In case of Chile, similar ingredients. So we don't have a elaborated uh, cuisine. So it's basically the same. Uh, Elaria said there will be a lot of salsa lovers in the waterfront. Stay tuned. <laughs> the mu the great, music great. and dance. Great. You guys are so cute. You gave me so many happy energy today. Love your love today. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. It's going. I hope we, we thank you, everyone. Our, our our countries and our laugh and our smile. Uh, and of course, this is for you. You receive it, uh, this piece of our country. Thank you so much for attending. And just see the last one. Someone is typing. So just a minute. <laughs> uh, and it's just a thing. Thank you all. Thank you so much, guys. Oh. So, much. so I really, yes, yes, I really yes, hope yes. you enjoyed our presentation. <laughs> and take care. And see you next time. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.